This is a second part of experiment five. Let's make a battery. And we're actually going to make the battery uh, in this session, and we are going to analyze um, some of the measurements we make as we go along in the third and final part next time. There's two different LEDs uh, that we'll be talking about, uh, the normal color lighter one uh, and then the darker high efficiency LED. We'll be starting with a darker high efficiency LED. Now you're also going to need, of course, pennies, uh, lemons, and uh, zinc-coated washers or zinc-coated nails, which are in the Every Bunch kit. Start building your battery. Um, what we're going to show here, at least, will be with uh, just three cells. So we'll take one half the battery and uh, put it aside for later. You need to insert a penny and a nail uh, into each lemon. And a hint here is that you really want the penny and nail not to be across uh, from each other. Uh, this will lead to having very high resistance, but in fact, uh, instead put them close to each other, but very important, make sure they're not touching. So maybe in adjacent sectors or maybe even uh, in the same sector, but at different ends. So do that for each of your three cells. And then we're going to hook up the battery. And it's very important that each nail goes to a penny on the next cell. So again, nail to penny, nail to penny, nail to penny. We're ready for the LED. Again, we're using the darker colored so-called high current, low current uh, LED, which should be a little easier to make glow. And we're not going to know at first exactly which way to orient our LED because we're not sure what's the positive and negative side of our battery. So you just have to choose a particular way to um, try to light up the LED. Darken the room lights if you can't see it. And uh, if it doesn't work, flip the orientation of your LED. Lights if necessary and take a nice picture for inclusion in your lab notebook. If you're having trouble, check and make sure that you have connected all your leads in the proper configuration. Again, penny to nail, penny to nail, penny to nail. And check the orientation of your LED. And feel free to tune your, turn your room lights all the way off or do this experiment at night if you're having trouble seeing it. Or try a different LED. You can always go back and make sure your LED works in a separate circuit. Okay, let's do some analysis. We're going to introduce two terms that are important to have when talking about power supplies in general and uh, batteries in particular. And the first is to measure the voltage of the battery, and we're just going to check it 
um, across the LED to start. Now we've seen before that our LED almost always has the same voltage drop across it, just a little under two volts, and if it's on, you should confirm it. And of course you have to make sure your probes are in the proper direction to get a reading. In this case, uh, 1.66 volts is required to light this particular low current LED. You may find a slightly different number, but that number really never changes. It's based just on the LED itself. Now we're going to measure the voltage of the battery without a load on it, that is, without anything connected. So we call this just the open circuit battery voltage, and it's the same thing you would be doing if you're measuring across the terminals of your battery. And now if you were lighting your LED, you should find that this open circuit, or V sub OC voltage, is greater than the voltage uh, of the LED, in my case, about two and a half volts. So it's able to turn on, have a overcoming voltage above the required threshold for the LED, which was only 1.65 volts. Next we're going to do something which you should not do on most power supplies or most batteries, and that is to measure a short circuit current. Now remember there's no resistor here, and so all the current that can be produced by this battery is going through. I've set my meter into the 200 microamp setting, and I'm reading about 124 microamps. And I'll notice that that number will change a little bit as I squeeze the battery. Again, never do this with a commercial battery, because instead of reading hundreds of microamps, you could actually be reading many amperes and blows the fuse in your multimeter. It is, however, quite safe to do with our little low-powered lemon battery here. So whereas uh, squeezing the lemon seemed to uh, produce a little bit more juice and pop, the current backup, which fades over time, it seems to have a fairly minimal effect on the open circuit voltage. Again, always staying right around a particular number, in my case, about two and a half volts, so regardless of how long it's been sitting there or how much I uh, squeeze the lemons. It does, however, change. Uh, if I change the number of cells, so in this case I'm going to reduce it to just having two cells or two lemons, uh, two nails and two pennies, I find that uh, my voltage is less. Just having two batteries instead of three essentially wired in what we call series. Okay, let's uh, wire our full three cell battery back up. Now we're going to try out the regular uh, LED. It's going to glow a lot dimmer than the uh, low current one, but you should be able to see it if you do turn off your room lights.
Beautiful. Okay, time to start uh, taking apart our battery. And uh, what you should observe is that the pennies are looking pretty shiny. If you start with some old pennies, the process of uh, running your batteries kind of clean them up. And meanwhile, the nails look a little bit sooty. They have some zinc oxide uh, that's formed on them, actually. And this leads us to the model which your textbook shows uh, in the figure in the lower left, which is that uh, electrons are unhappy uh, campers who don't like each other and want to escape if given the opportunity to move through the acid of the battery. Uh, and uh, they will leave the pennies and run over to the zinc nails. Please read the textbook for a little bit more description of everything that goes on inside uh, of your battery. So it should be pretty clear. You really don't want to eat your lemons. Um, something has been going on uh, that's been changing the look and feel of the electrodes, the pennies and the nails. So do throw your batteries away. Um, take a proud picture of your battery from the LED lit up and put it in your notebook. Uh, remember your room lights might have to be down, uh, turned down some. Next thing I'd like you to make a table of data on one, two, three and four cell batteries. In your notebook, please record the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage for each. Presumably, uh, at least the voltage is going to increase as you increase the number of cells. Does the current as well? Um, please discuss your data. In particular, particular, does it increase linearly? That is, as uh, you add a cell, does the voltage go up exactly by the same amount each time? Finally, I have a design challenge for you. I'd like you to configure your four cells uh, to try to make the highest short circuit current battery possible. Uh, and then let me know how much current you were able to produce. Again, the goal is to make the most current, and you're probably going to have to sacrifice the voltage to do that. Be careful of the current setting you are on on your meter. You may have to change readings off of the 200 microamp scale if you create more and more current. Please describe your setup uh, for the high current battery.